Balkanians are known to be iconic in the way they think, representations they have made, in fact, in athletics, is up high. But in matters environmental care and conservation, there was a great voice to reckon with, the late Ungari Mathai. Let's take a look at the news yam today as we progress. Hi, Wagari Mutamadai, Interim Presiding Officer of the Economic and Social and Cultural Council of the African Union. Do swear that as Interim Presiding Officer, I will truly and faithfully serve the Economic and Social and Cultural Council of the African Union to secure the aims and objectives of the statute. In the exercise of the roles and functions of the office, I will uphold the dignity of the Economic and Social and Cultural Council of the African Union and impartially enforce the interim rules of procedure of the Economic and Social and Cultural Council of the African Union. I will not directly or indirectly reveal any matter referred to the Economic or accept instructions from any authority external to the Economic, Social and Cultural Council or the African Union. So help me God. And odds, odds bind you. And in such positions, credibility, competence, qualifications, merit are necessary. You know, yes. Nelson here, he served, you know, um, at least for Kenya, in AU, in as far as finances were concerned, um, etc. for about, I think, 10, months, 10, 10 years and 8 yeah, months. And we need to understand, how, how is the environment there, the, com com the competence that is required there to actually look like you're useful? Because in this race, we're just not you know, prompting Kenya as, as a country, but we are also making sure that Kenya is a brand in itself, that our representation in the AUC race is fully taken care of to represent the Kenyans for the people of integrity that they are. Yeah. In African Union, being a chairperson of African Union, you must be very resilient to so many things, especially the pressures from outside. Remember, Africa is at a place of its growth where everybody wants to trade something with Africa, even if it means buying Africa. You may remember that uh, Chinese build the African Union headquarters for more than $200 million for free. Uh, the a present from... Uh, Mauritania. Ma Mauritania. Mauritania, yes. Mauritania. The current, I think from February this year, mm. he's the current president of AU. But the chairperson of the commission is a very key person. Mm. He's the key negotiator for all the bodies that are within the African Union. He convenes the PRCs, the article of the permanent representative committees. He's going to co co confirm the, the, the RECs, the regional economic communities, for example, the East African communities, Hadi Kekwas. So he has to be acceptable across Africa. Mm -hmm. Not just in Kenya, but Africa as a whole. And remember, Kenya is not the best country in Africa, whether it's an economy or administration. We, are, we may be somewhere, but we're not the best. There are some countries in Africa which feels they are more African than others, or they are much ahead of others quite a number of them. There are areas I could go for meetings in Africa and then yes. because of the skin tone, they don't believe that I'm actually African. They, they're not part of us. Like, we are different from them. Look at Morocco, mm -hmm. Algeria. When you go to those meetings, you you will feel that you are not in Africa, though you are in Africa. So, and, if... And they're largely Francophone. Yes, they're largely Francophone. And they believe that the, the French are more powerful and they have the truth more than the Anglophone, which is very dangerous. Now, mm -hmm. here is a case where if uh, our, our own Baba goes there and becomes the chairperson, uh, he has to mull through the language barrier. You will have to have an interpreter every morning <coughs> to evening. Otherwise, you lost out. <laughs> you'll be lost out. Utasengenyo kama umeka hapa. Speaking of which, um, mm. this language advantage has just cropped in yeah. from, from Nelson's remarks. I want to hear from the rest of panelists because it's not just a matter of um, prominence in your country. Cuts yeah. across. And, and seemingly, at this point in time, gentlemen, uh, East Africa seems to be speaking in two voices. Mm. I'm here mm. to get that analysis uh, from uh, Professor. Mm. 
because, well, Raila Odinga, and then now we see Muhammad uh, Ali Yusuf. Mm -hmm. uh, so which direction? Or what? Fuzia. Yes, Af yes. Fuzia Yusuf, Somalia. Yes. L let, let me put this, put it this way. It, it might sound very unpatriotic uh, for a Kenyan not to support Raila Odinga because, as we are told, he's a, he's a Kenyan candidate. And the other, uh, th therefore, uh, the whims of patriotism require that you, you, you say it. But it's not patriotic to take, your own, to take your country to war when you know that it's a senseless yes. war. You don't, take, you, you don't become patriotic when you take your country to a senseless war or a war when you know you are going to lose. Uh, if you listen to Nelson, <coughs> what he's telling you, N N Nelson and I share something in common that we are, we are born and brought up in the African Union. Remember, uh, we, uh, this is April. We are already on, this, on the 17th of April. We still have another almost 15 days to go. So you don't know where else is going to go. What we did is we split it fast and appeared to be the we need to be in the race because we are alone. Because people have to put pap their papers together. And this is the man they put. Now, we have seen now that Djibouti has put a candidate who is variable in the sense that can speak all the languages of the African Union, yes. Arabic, French, English, and if pushed the, to the corner, he will even speak Swahili, uh, so to say. That, and he's a very known person mm -hmm. because experience. of his experience, very well known within the, Afri the AU circles. For Zia, uh, yeah, Yusuf for Somalia, mm -hmm. Was the prime minister, or well, deputy the prime minister, minister, deputy prime minister, uh, and we have had men in, in the seat. Yes. Therefore, the gender issue mm. might also come up. And uh, though I believe this was deliberated on, and it, it wasn't looked at as much of a threat, the gender no, card. No, the, the gender, oh, no, we are not talking about but the gender it, card. It, it, it may still play in coldly. It can be co coldly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very tricky. It's very tricky. Because <laughs> if you tell the lady, if you tell the lady from uh, Rwanda, who is the current deputy chair of the union to step down uh, so that we can have a person from the region mm -hmm. and that person, uh, you know, the, the, the person who go for the deputy becomes a man, then you, you will be under pressure to get somebody there. But what, what is the big point? This is an opportunity for Eastern Africa to either put the best candidate or squander the opportunity. Because when the 55 countries, say, I mean, a, a states sit down to vote, it will not be about East Africa. It's about what is good for the continent. They're not going to take a crap from the region. So what they are likely to do, and I suspect this might be the case, if the candidate from East Africa does not uh, measure uh, to the standards, then what will happen is that Fakir's uh, I mean, position will be extended by six months yeah. to give you time to think. Mm. Uh, that's what they did with... Uh, yeah. You know the the the, the, the claim of uh, Dramini Zuma. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jin, uh, Jean Ping was, had his term extended. Now the point is, can we as Kenyans really be go back to the drawing board and look at our interests, and then put the best who can champion our interests in this country? And we don't have time. Yeah, we don't have. In this country, I can tell you, if William Ruto and his government and the opposition mm. and everybody else look into this country we can produce a candidate yes. who can win first round in the african union first yeah. round yeah. not even the second yeah. Yeah. but because we are caught up in in this rebrand of our domestic, our domestic <laughs> mediocre <laughs> politics we cannot lie beyond the, the scene mm. and what 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 therefore do we are we facing we are facing an incident that we are like... He's the one who got this thing together. He was the Minister for Foreign Affairs when the Mbagathi draft constitution was, 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 was basically uh, uh, promulgated and then they went back into their country. He was there throughout. He has been involved in the Sudan, the, the, what do you call the co comprehensive peace, peace accord? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace peace accord yeah. Agreement, which yeah. is CPA. CPA. More or less architect behind it in a sense. And he has, he has a history. He has old bread, Igad as well. Yes, Igad, yes. yes. And people like Kikwete were his close buddies and friends. So, Council, well, they were Council. together as foreign mm. ministers before yeah. Kikwete became a president. Mm. Yep. So, that is one person. And then, as a vice president, he served for five good for years, five good years. Right. as a vice president and, and, and literally traveled the length and the breadth of this country, has friends everywhere. Mm. If we had fronted him on the first time, 
I don't think even Djibouti would have had no. a candidate. No. But Mwishmua, is there is there a framework that helps us pick the candidates Kenya? How do you know that no, 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 this no, candidate is no, 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 okay. okay. not I, I don't know. I, I think how do you land on this candidate? I, I, I think, I think uh, I, I, is there well, a framework? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. No, no, no. This was just <laughs> a very private matter. I mean, uh, Raila decided and basically got the support of... Uh, declared his bid. Uh, uh, declared his no. bid. Get the support of the but, president. But Let me just finish. Let me just finish. I, I would love to have to... Uh, on, on that, professor, on, let, on that honorable, note. Uh, professor, can go, can yeah, go yeah, Let me just finish. Let's let just honorable finish. Uh, yeah. ma now, finish. Now, you're going back to... Another dark horse who has come into the race now. Who has... Whose country has a bond to pick with Kenya. Mm-hmm. They ran for the a membership U of the UN Security Council. The UN Security Council. And lost to us. Will they lost to us? All right. They ran for the AU. What was it? Uh, AU. Se yes. Se the nomination. Peace and Security, whatever yes. it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nomination for yes. the same. Yes. Nomination for the same. Mm. They lost to us, and in every case they went the full hall. Yeah. Am I yes. right? Yes. yes. They did not, they, there was no negotiation and understanding. It's like we rubbish them. We told them, oh, you, what, are, what are you, Djibouti? Yes. Go ahead and run. We will humiliate you on the floor, which we did. Mm. We defeated them in both cases. But we, we really sweated. We sweated very hard towards the end. Yeah, I know. Today, the only thing they will accept from you is to say, let's make peace from now on. We'll leave it for you. Now, the man who they have brought in right now, I know him very well. I know Mahmoud Ali. Gentleman par excellence, real gentleman. Very independent minded, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very independent minded. Yes. One of the people who are touted for the succession of Djibouti, yes. that once Ismail Margele leaves, yeah. is a likely person to become the president of the country. Mm -hmm. He's not a, an ethnic Somali, by the way. No. He's an Afar. He's an Afar. Afar. Yeah. You get my point. All right. And 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 Djibouti. I mean, the, now uh, he is fluent in French, fluent in Arabic, right. fluent in Somali. More fluent than me in Somali. In Somali. Right Let me tell you, fluent in Amarinya, You know, yes. which is the, yeah. the, 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 so the language of the, the, the language we face as a country today is that we have a habit of appointing incompetent people to high office, and um, the appointment of the ambassadors and high commissioners, the reason list is an example of that. I think when the parliament was vetting some of these people, they say, I think three of these, uh, please don't, eh? but uh, it should have said more than three, <laughs> because the people who are appointed there are really mediocre. But that's not the issue. All right. The issue is, why would the president appoint people who really don't fit. It is the country's reputation and his own image. And he's trying to go there and say he's um, the leader of Africa and all those things and all those things. And then the others are asking, with these kind of people, <laughs> as your best, really? Because it's not just the Kenyans alone. The whole world is watching and Raising questions. How can you? We have the problem with the doctors. Eh? Mm. I think BBC had a big feature on it yesterday. Yes. Mm. And it's not looking good. Eh? Right. You train people and you say you need them. And they've been told before, Kagwanja can understand this. We've been told that the reason people don't have jobs is because they studied history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so now you sit here, you have all these doctors who are needed, and they don't have jobs. Eh? We have hospitals that have no doctors. And we have doctors who have no hospital. It's a policy confusion at the top. Yeah. It's a policy issue. So if everybody is watching and see what's that confusion in Kenya, what is this? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you expect Kenya to go and lead the rest. They, so so the, the, the question being raised. I'm, I'm sorry to interject. I'm still with you, Honorable <laughs> uh, Professor Masharia, because Ray Lauding is not new to AU. He served, um, you know, as the African Union High Representative for Infrastructure. 
Yeah. Yes. That, he was uh, supposed to be rude. Let's, let's listen to Nelson on that. I, I would want you to, to know. Did he not perform? <laughs> there is no role in the architect of African Union Commission called Ooh. Ambassador or High. There is no. No, there's none. In the infrastructure of Africa, you know, there are commissioners. So where did it come there from? There is a commissioner for infrastructure. <laughs> There's a commissioner for peace. There's a deal between there's a, and there's a commission. Let, so let me, this, will not be pleased to hear this. No, let, no, no let, but that's the reality. Let's be clear. That's 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 reality reality. Because yeah. there is no position called high representative of um, something else. No. For, in, for infrastructure. infrastructure. Representative for infrastructure. That position was for 2008 Was created just for It is not time. in the architect. The, the architect of the African Union statutes. The African Union has commissions. There's a commission in charge of infrastructure. A whole commission. Is that yeah, after the restructuring? Fully fledged. No, no, no. no the South Af the, I mean, Africa it has is, not been restructured okay. since the. It the was African Union has a commission for infrastructure, for infrastructure. and development. And, right. there, and there's a commissioner. We cut Professor short, but we yeah. just needed that clarity because that is yeah. something that has been fronted yeah. over and over. So the, the point I was trying to raise yes. Kenya has a reputation for incompetence. And wrong policies, and then try to promote those as really wonderful things. Yeah? So, we have the mess in um, the Haiti mess. Yes, it's yeah. a total mess. Complete. And they are not even paying their small debt in Kenya. Forget about in Haiti. Yeah? They are not. The East African case. The East African, you know, the, the and it's everybody can see there. Why is Kenya blundering everywhere? And then it's expected to lead other people. And so they say, no, 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 no. Uh, Something is wrong. We should concentrate and more yes, on home. Yes, Raila is well known in the All continent. Right. Okay. Not in the best way all the time. Not in that very positive, no. what you call a yeah. uh, 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 thing. Is is largely, largely, if you talk to, I mean, I've had an occasion to talk to many heads of states from the continent. He's seen as some kind of a sellout who is more fascinated with the Americans and the British yes. and the West. Yeah. And the Zionists for this matter. Oh, rebellion, some would say this yeah. is more... This, this is the candidate. And when, yeah. and he's a rebel when, rouser. When he went, he was, one, of the, one of the guys that they never, they literally broke up towards the end was Osama Magufuli. Oh, Magufuli. 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 Before, before he passed on. Yes. Before he passed on. And, and, and um, you know, uh, I, I, it's, it's understandable. Sometimes... One would say, without the Jews, without the Americans, without the British, you can never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Every time somebody is running for the presidency in this country, there's always a desire to try and Talk address, the West, yeah. address uh, a gallery outside. Mm -hmm. The only time that never happened was when Uhuru and Ruto ran for the first time. Mm -hmm. And the international community was basically the Americans, the British, all of them were opposed to that. Mm -hmm. And then becoming, uh, because of they the, wanted I Raider. the ICC, mm -hmm. because of the ICC that time. And they wanted Raya. Yeah, and, and, and then what happened? Let me tell you one thing. Right. I, 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 before, <clears throat> before we even went into this, Kagwanja had said Uhuru would have been also uh, a choice. Uhuru would have lost and big time. Mm. Why so? All because the whole African continent, heads of states came together and said, we should never submit ourselves to the ICC as heads yes. of state. Mm. I was that team that yes. was campaigning. Yes. As okay. heads of state. Yes. Okay. Apart from Botswana, who, 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 who did not make a vote. They yes, yes. The vote. All of them. And then, what did Uhuru do? Because he has interests, he has business interests all over the world, he played a trick on the African heads of state. He says, I have transferred power to my deputy. To my deputy. Which technically is trying to tell the, the Africa, I'm not, I'm not the head of state for the duration I'm there. <laughs> yes. you, you get my point? Yes. And, and, and then he went there. Then, I met a head of state myself from the region who is I'm not at liberty to mention his name. And he says he's a traitor and he betrayed us. Yes. I will actually mention Hassan Omar al-Bashir. Yes, yes. You get my point? Hassan, yes, yes. yes, he said, your head of state is a traitor. And he betrayed the continent, but and that was what, that was widespread yes. all over the continent. He was seen as these guys, Kenyans, can never be trusted. But th that's what we are talking about because I have said this before: Kenyans are exporting their bad manners to the African stage. Now, that's a very strong statement. Yes, okay. yes, and, yes, I, and, yes. I, and I want to back it. Yes, I, I agree with you. It. I agree with you. I want to back it. Yeah. Now, we 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 enacted the 2010 Constitution. And we rocked ourselves 
into a two system that you have an opposition and you have a government. Right. The nonsense of power sharing within this constitution is not allowed. But because we have to force ourselves into some form, then we started post-election negotiations between the opposition, the winners and the losers. And the only avenue we had was the African stage, IGAD and the African Union. Yeah, yeah. So we crafted our politics around the two institutions that uh, when you are losers and you have to be tamed and to be seen to be eating and happy, then you have to be touched somewhere. The budget is an economist within the African Union. It's not paid for by the African Union. It's yeah. paid for by Kenya. Yeah. Therefore, you create a, bo a body here and request the chairman of the African Union to legalize it. Internalize it. it. Yes. Internalize it. Yes, yes. But then the only question is the CEO of the African Union is who, and, the, who pays and, the, and the, who pays for it. And, we and Kenya will pay for it. Yes, there we go. If including the tickets and everything, the, yeah. the food package. So you are making peace at home at the expense of the, the African Union. And then you ask the question, what was the role of these uh, you know, special envoy or special that, special that, high this, high that. It is basically Kenyans playing their gimmicks on the African stage. And now, this is going to the African Union, the position now, it has to, it's a two-pronged, if you wish, or a double-edged sword. One, it will kill the opposition, Kenya, yes. In Kenya now, because you don't have another time to to basically put the opposition together, and two, yes, because the opposition will be jostling for Dinka succession, and that's what you are seeing in the papers now, uh, because the election is over and you are not stabilizing the opposition. Instead of basically putting uh, William Ruto under check, what are we doing? We are yo-yoing around, we are clapping now, too. and so on. Now we are we have put Raila Odinga onto this, and it's a gabo that we know we might lose. So what are we going to do? We are losing. We lose the opposition. So lose we, we lose the opposition. We lose the the, the, the AU seat, and then give Ruto a blank check in 2027. That's it. Uh, gentlemen, let me bring us fast track as to the latest information because unless we're living in some sort of illusion, mm. uh, the information I have is that former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, and I'm reading it directly, or Raila Odinga's bid for the African Union Commission AUC chairperson seat has received. A major boost mm. okay after a game-changing decision was on Friday made at the body's headquarters in Addis Ababa Ethiopia you followed mm -hmm. um, the role of Musalia Mudavadi in this yes and of course uh, this after the AU Executive Council on Friday unanimously adopted a critical decision that it is the turn of East Africa of course that put him uh, on the ladder but what uh, Musalia Mudavadi said and very confidently mm. he said this is a major breakthrough for the East African region to present candidates for the position of the chairperson of the AUC. He has been one of those people who has been very confident that Raila Odinga is the best candidate. And I know it's East Africa, but for Kenya, um, very confident that Raila Odinga is clinching this seat. Why, why would we dismiss that we, uh, from, from the foreign minister? <laughs> from, from, from where I sit, from, from, from my perspective, Raila Odinga must be the... the must be differentiated from a candidate from East Africa. Any, even you can put your papers, Professor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very arrangeable. You, you can put your papers. And just when, to add, when, just to add, he yes. actually ascertained Kenyans that um, there, are, there are no technical or legal hurdles preventing Kenya from 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 submitting a candidate. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but Kenya, Kenya is, Kenya is okay. the, the only people so, running against Raila Odinga are from East Africa. Yeah. The so, problem is not. The problem is Muhammad Ali from Djibouti. Take it, get it. Do yeah. we have a chance against him? Yeah. Okay. That is the question. Because <laughs> look at look at this competitors that Raila has. Give it to him. Raila has experience of diplomacy. Yeah, he knows people almost everywhere right and he is able to endear himself to whoever he wants to but uh, technically looking at it the council the, the UN the, the AU council saying that they have endorsed or they have said East Africa can now produce a candidate yeah. is just a, a rubber stamp is not it doesn't have any significance the thing is it is now East African time
Okay. Next time it will be SADC, it could be ECOWAS, it could be anywhere else. West Africa. Uh, West Africa. Actually, even the, the minister. So it is just a decision of the council. Of course. It no, doesn't, no, it doesn't it is, mean... It is ultimated because, if, yeah. you, if you remember, this decision was arrived at in 2013. 2012, 13, 2012, yes. 2013. It was arrived at, at the National at the Assembly. Uh, no, uh, Assembly. Yes. The Assembly of Heads of State said it is the turn for East Africa. Why? The first candidate came from West Africa. Mm. The second candidate came from Central Africa. The third candidate mm. came from Southern Africa. The fourth candidate has come again from North Africa, Chad. If yes. you, if you come yes. to the, the North Africa. Mm. So naturally, uh, if, a if a child, if a, if a mother is eight months pregnant, then there is only one month Left. Left. Very, 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 very important. Very you remember when, when the Lamine Zuma was launching the Agenda 2063 in 2013, the assessment was in 50 years, this is the Africa you want to see. Yes. One of the things that they made in that document is there can't be chairmanship from one region, region yeah. throughout. There okay. must be some kind of rotation, rotation yeah. just to make it look like we're all equal. Yeah. Rel Odinga, for him to, to win against the Djibouti candidate, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he will require more than just uh, talking to people, not just money. What will he require? He, he requires votes. He will require votes. Right. A vote, where a are vote, the votes? A where, where are the votes? Isn't Kenya no. strong remember, enough to convince? No. Remember, remember no. East Africa countries, even if they voted for him, all of them. It's a small number. It's a very small number. We were just 12. Yeah. We were just 12 out of Go to West us. Africa, go to yeah. Southern Africa. 12 yeah. out of 55. Assuming that even Djibouti... Uh, who Kenyans heard from his mouth that let us support uh, Brian Odinga through this bid. And now you, you're saying he's not the, one of the most credible people, of course, based on his political history in the West, yeah. Western uh, Africa. No, the, um, so did you start on the Obasan, wrong footing? Obasan Joe is, a, is a, a good old man who used to be president of Nigeria. Good elder. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there are a few things he might have done that eroded his credibility. Um, he promised Charles Taylor a cinema security in Nigeria and vowed in public that the Taylor would not be what? Put to jail. Afterwards, I think he was called by Bush for some tea. And the next thing we heard was that they were saying that Taylor was trying to run away. So they sent him to the, to to the, the egg. To the egg, yeah. And the question that came, wait a minute, what are you talking about? And there his credibility yeah. disappeared. Yeah. It's not like, uh, you know Zimbabwe, they used to El Mariam. El Mariam, yes. Who ended up in Zimbabwe and he has never been molested? No. They honored okay. the commitment. Obasanjo did not honor commitment for the commitment for that. So when he talked, people say, What are you talking about? What credibility do you have? That sort of thing. Then uh, in this, the Raila proposal, Mike. the Kenyan, I think uh, give President Ruto credit. credit mm for speaking faster than other people. So when he said that all the East African countries have agreed it's uh, Israel, that's what he said. Eh? At that time, Djibouti had not... Yeah, but then, uh, apparently not all, uh, all of them had agreed. Okay. Because now you have Djibouti, you have Somalia. And what does that mean, actually? You know, because he had said we had all agreed and then Djibouti... Yeah, so the, does that also interfere? The, maybe that, that's what, we, when we started, we say he speaks too fast. Mm. too quickly before even consulting properly as to what should or should not be. He may be doing that because of political intricacies. He wants Raila out of the way. And so and entice him with some uh, carrot of a big job somewhere. In any case, if he loses the seat, yeah. he will say anyway. I tried. Baba has always been losing. <laughs> I tried. So there, there is that uh, angle to it. And uh, it does not look very good for Raila at present. All right. And by extension, does not look very good for Ruto. And Kenya. Because, and Kenya. Because it will be a verdict on Kenya's standing. Not just in uh, East Africa, but in the, in the African uh, continent. In the world, yeah. And the fact that we have been going against some principles of the AU yeah. is not very encouraging. Mm -hmm. Like in Gaza. Yeah. 
You know, let me tell you one thing. I would not be surprised. The West African scenario today, there's a fire, there's a storm building up in that side. Yeah. Burkina Faso, Mali, <laughs> Niger, <laughs> Senegal now, you know what I mean? Progressively. Ghana and Nigeria, which are anglophone, are isolated. The rest of them are together. I would not be surprised even the idea of Djibouti seeking a sweet revenge did not come from the West African bloc and the North African bloc. Is it? Yes. So, uh, uh, we, 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 we don't have, we've never had such a good standing with African, Pan-Africanism in the world from the day one, from the moment we got independence. We hope not, you're too young yourself. But President Ruto is coming out as... Uh, and let me just finish. Yeah. You, you're too young. The two of you I can't remember. Yeah. But the three of us do remember. Yes. We hopnopped with apartheid South Africa those yes. days. Mm -hmm. It was very expensive for us, diplomatically. Diplomatically. We hopnopped. We did not support the liberation movements in the South. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we did. We didn't support. Yes. Tanzania literally risked their independence and everything they had. Mm. Zambia did the same. Somalia trained and fought alongside the Mozambican for Limo, for Limo, the ANC, the Namibians, all of them. The Ethiopians gave certain tokenism. But when, when, when Mangesta Haile Mariam came to power, mm -hmm. they also supported it yes. fully. We have always been seen as some kind of an Uncle Tom, mm. house slave. Milk and water. Yes, kind people, of people who... Despite the kind of history we've had, and, and nobody can blame us for the history because okay. the, the people who made that history are nowhere. Where, where are the Mau Mau fighters? Where, where are the children of Koitelel or Samoy? Where is that clan, the Talai clan? The Scotland somewhere in Rangwe, in Luarland. Which means this thing was handed over to the loyalists, home guards. Home guards. So we, and when you say home guards, betrayers of the African cause. So basically what we have is that right now with the things the way they are going, All right. both in the north, mm. in the west, mm. in southern Africa, have you seen what Malema is doing and what the southern African government is doing? You think that lady is going to support Raila? What's her name? Oh, no, no, the, the minister for the foreign minister, affairs. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Narendra. You think that no, giant can't. of a woman, giant of a person, she it's that, that very powerful, philosophical, you know, pragmatic, realistic, what do you call, uh, material. It is we'll like... Go, we'll go and look for some, some what do you call, uh, uh, sellouts. <laughs> <laughs> it is like in two, two, 2027, uh, 2022, yes. Raira Odinga expected that, uh, well, I mean, uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta yes. will be that uh, Midas touch. Yes. That the moment the Kenyatta touches you, 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 touch you, you become president. Become, and and he even went to sleep. Midas he, touch. he didn't have that Midas <laughs> touch. The same case with William Ruto. Not William Ruto doesn't have the Midas touch to touch you and make you a uh, you chair. It, it doesn't. You have to go deeper into the dynamics of African politics. Let, let, let me tell you something else. Let, yeah, as, let, as we let, share the time that is remaining, let gentlemen. Me, let me tell you something. Just about 15 minutes. Let me give minutes, you a little yes, bit of yes, a historical yes, perspective. Yes, Mali. When we were going for elections in 2007, ODM, I was in ODM. Right. We were seen as very powerful revolutionaries. Before that, we had the young Turks. Yep. We did change. not vote. <laughs> Professor Masharia. We were, we were, we had. All, I was on the other side. We had all, <laughs> we had all the brilliant ideas about an African you know, zoo. All right. And how you know, the pro-Western uh, people who were there were going to be gotten rid of. Raila became a prime minister in that accord, national accord. One of the countries that was very close to us at the time was Eritrea. Was Eritrea? Yeah. Where we, the, we, we made sure that as ODM, we were, we were in the best of books with them. Let me explain to you. They even supported us. I'll, 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 I'll give you that information today. They even materially supported us. Mm -hmm. What did our prime minister do? He went to New York and he called them a pariah state. 
<laughs> to please the Americans and the Europeans and the rest of them. All right. You think that person is going to vote for you? So that is very and, and, and how many how many other countries can a size of working influence today? Mm. The majority of the African countries. All the progressive, progressive, forward looking, you know, uh, proud pan Africanists, he will be able to mm. influence them. Gentlemen, allow me to put this on the table. The only country I'm not yes. quite I'm sure of how they're going to behave in this case mm. is going to be is going to be Ethiopia because Abi is literally <laughs> like Raila. Now, vividly, the, the voting pattern is is coming out in your in this analysis, and by the way, as Kenyans are watching this morning, this these are very experienced minds, um, and of course, you can also send in your thoughts uh, because they might not be final. Or gospel mm -hmm. truth, uh, just panelists also sharing their perspectives. At KTN News, we're about to close this show. Um, let us know what your thoughts are uh, in as far as this AUC chair race is concerned. But Nelson, we are a country that has been like any other country dealing with um, economic instability, or not really fully, but we are trying to gauge um, mm -hmm. our stability yet again, especially everyone suffered after COVID, you know, and then elections. But this, you said, is not just goodwill. We also need some finances. From what I'm hearing on this table, if it's going to be probably a loss, then would Kenyans be smart enough to not lose the money against an already lost race? What's the if money I, if, for? Bribing? If I, let, me, let me hear, because he said that money is put in. Nelson, yes, you have experience money, in this money, for money, 10 years and 8 months. Money is put in for so many reasons. Okay. Lobbying for any position requires somebody to travel from point A to point B yeah, and yeah, sell yeah, yourself yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. to every country. You have to endear yourself to that minister, to that cabinet, or whatever the person they are talking to. Is it likened to campaign mode? It's more of campaign. All right. You know, I, I, I got advantage of uh, looking for finances for the African Union when we are doing the Pan-African passport. Mm. So we, go, we wanted to raise about $400 million. US dollars. Yes, for, for that project. And that was the, like, almost the budget for AU every year and the deficit is almost 300 million dollars you are you are given a budget enough to make sure that you can go somewhere if you have to take somebody to a bar and buy a drink for the person for him to listen to you well you have to do that if Raila Odinga wants to win this which is I cannot predict but it is the odds are really not, not here for him he must put aside a serious kitty for for his lobbying and he has to put brains that can be able to convince people because like you can see for South Africa as Mishma is saying the Minister of Foreign Affairs is a very strong person unless Rela calculates in every country he has to strategize every country who is supposed to do who can talk to this person mm -hmm. because sometimes he may not have the the willingness to be listened to people may not be willing to listen to him not everybody at least he has to use allies to try and find out. And that is resources. All right. It is in dollars. It is a lot of money. It is not possible that you can go campaigning by goodwill. Even if it's a church election for <laughs> my PhD in the village, they still use money for campaigning, to campaign for a church leadership position. Leave alone. <laughs> Even being a student leader at the of Nairobi, <laughs> you have to campaign. You need resources, and this is global. So right now, Raila has no time to to joke. He has to put his best foot forward. So where where, where would he get these resources? Because he, I think that's, I believe that's he has a is. committee that is dealing with fundraising. I hope. All right. Because again, this is something that has happened before. I remember the election of last year. The other day, this is a election. There was a lot of mistakes that were done. The election, the national election. Yes, a lot of mistakes were a, done. Any, any money that goes into that place will never be used. I mean. If we didn't use them for the agents last time yeah. to win an election in Kenya, we can do all the fundraising, <laughs> but will it be used to go and spend it on, yeah, we, Af on Africans? We, we, we gave each a million. It was the most expensive dinner I've ever attended uh, for, for agents. And then I can, I can vote in Moranga, there was no agent. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, 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 in my constituency, Naila got 23,000 votes. Ruto got 508 votes. Okay. And Ruto had three agents in every polling station, 100 and I think something. <laughs> he had 300 people in everywhere. And when one goes out, the other one brings the meals, you know what I mean? Only to protect 508 votes. Mm -hmm. And there was no single agent from Naila.
I mm. had to do it myself. You had to do it yourself. And spend not less than millions of shillings on that. So those mistakes he, he must learn from it because yes. Yes. those are very key lessons that he must take because this is not a this is not a bluff. This is a, his, his retirement plan. Right. I mean, if he got the job for Africa Union, we'll be happy for him, and it'll be surely retirement plan for him. All right. Uh, if he's not already retired. <laughs> <laughs> he already has the retirement benefits. Okay. They, they all have retirement because, benefits. Because we are about to, is there. we are about to close the show. But this is still very, very important. Uh, I want to hear your closing remarks. Uh, Professor, okay. uh, in, in, and as this is concerned, and just what we have heard from all the panelists, we, mm. as a Kenyan, I'm a, of course I'm a neutral Kenyan. Mm. And I'm just learning. And of course, Farah Malim said some of us on this table are, are way younger, mm. appreciating history. But... Your final remarks, because this is officially on. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, Kenyans should not be surprised or disappointed when we lose that thing. In, in case or when Raila loses <laughs> that position. Because the chances of that happening are about 80%. 80%, you said? Yes. In fact, I want to take percentages so, for one of you. So, 80% you lose. Okay. Um, that's one thing. The other is maybe advice to President Ruto uh, to change his attitude when it comes to appointment. Uh, appointing, he's the one who said he appoints uh, incompetent people. So he said it one time that his CSs and PSs. Did, did he really say it that way? Yes, he said he meets them in the corridors and, and they no, said. He to said not... that they don't know what they are doing. Yes. That's incompetent. A few of them. To be yeah. specific. No, but he appointed them. All right. You know, so please appoint people who are competent, even if they are cronies, <laughs> if they are whatever they are, they should have some value to the country, and not just to the president. Because what we saw with the ambassadors and the high commissioners and council generals is a collection of uh, referrals, mm -hmm. incompetent, <laughs> who really have no clue. So I'm sure there are a lot of people in Kenya Kwanzaa. Forget about Azimiwe. Mm. There are a lot of people in Kenya Kwanzaa who are real good and competent. All right. And deserve to be considered. So when he goes around appointing people whose very presence is an insult to intelligence, it does not do him good. And the future policies, whatever, they, he needs to consult widely. All right. Because right now he does not seem to consult. Thank you very much, uh, right. Professor. Um, unfortunately, we only have three minutes, gentlemen. Okay. Okay. So please let's share. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no I, I, I. You're oh, parting. Let, let me, let me, let me tell you one thing. Yes. Uh, everything is looking not very good as far as the AUC is concerned. Uh, we, 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 we will, we will cro keep our fingers crossed. All right. And. Uh, 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 for Zia, I don't know whether, she, whether she's going to go the full haul, but the likelihood of them, Somalia, also stepping down in favor of Djibouti, mm -hmm. in favor of Djibouti, yep. is very high. Because Rayla Odinga publicly, on many occasions, supported the disintegration of the state of Somalia. He supported the Somaliland independence. And the cardinal principle of the OAU founding fathers itself is non viability of the territorial integrity of those countries as they were left behind by the colonial masters, except where there's a mutual understanding like Eritrea and Ethiopia. All right. And, and, and Sudan and South Sudan. So this one basically was that. So it doesn't put him in a very good respect with that. We, ha we are pre preparing ourselves for something. I don't know whether we're going to have a World War III or not, but things are not good. Let us steer our politics in favor of our national interest. Let us be with the right sides. When Mandela was out of jail, and ex everybody expected him to thank the Americans and the Western world and the rest of them, and he said, you cannot choose our f my, my friends for me. He told the Americans, he told the Jews that time, the Zionists were there, Yasser Arafat is a brother. Right. The Palestinian cause is our cause. And I think those are the kind of things. Start, stick to your principles. Have an ideological persuasion. Let us not flip-flop because of what you feel is the expediency of the moment. <clears throat> so I think as a country, and I'm saying this to all our people, let's take 
positions globally in the interest of our national interest as well as the solidarity of the Pan-African movement Thank you. as well as the third world non-aligned countries that essentially are subject to the Western hegemony of today. Any hegemony. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Malim. Let's hear from Nelson. Okay, thank you very, very much. Very briefly. Uh, for me, I think I will, I will uh, echo the sentiment from Professor Masharia. Masharia, okay. that we shouldn't be surprised if the outcome doesn't favor what we think is going to be the best. We must now that is for the AUC chair. For the AUC, for the AUC uh, seat. We, yes. we, we must now focus more on what's happening in Kenya. We have so much to do. I don't think that uh, is the right time for us to focus on the AUC immediately, especially with the candidate that we've chosen. It's a bit tricky. We could focus on some other matters. Currently, we have doctors striking. I don't know how that helps or paints the image of Kenyans, and I've heard the IG commending on this and really it's not the best. That, 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 that in itself, you know, is someone reading this from outside this? Yes. Let's pay the doctors because they're treating, they're treating the, you know, the, the poor people. All of us here on this table, yes. when we want, when we become sick, we go to Nairobi hospital, we go to Agakhan hospital. It's the poor man who's suffering. If we don't pay these doctors, is the 95% Kenyans who cannot afford thank private health Thank you, thank you, Honorable. Uh, I just want to, your closing remarks. Very, very quickly. Very quickly, I, in I, I think I will echo what has been said, that yes. we go back to our national interests and base our foreign policy on our national interest. That will mean that we, be, we put our best and the ablest in front and that we will not go to the whims of politics, uh, the advantages that we want to get in politics. And that is what is putting, you know, uh, right out Dinga on a door, uh, on a uh, on a trap door. It is a trap door because I will agree with Macharia Munene that uh, the 80 percent of the chances, 80 to 85 percent of the chances are that Raida will lose, and he rules because he is going for the wrong job, for the right, the, he's the right person, but going for the wrong job. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Farah Mali, Member of Parliament Adab, for creating time for us. Uh, Professor Masharia Munene, Foreign Affairs Expert, for also being here early for this conversation. I want to appreciate uh, Dr. Nelson Sechere, who is Executive Director, Kenya Veterans for Peace, for creating time to be here as well. And Professor Peter Kagwanja, who is a diplomacy and, of course, foreign affairs expert. Uh, my name is uh, Anki Dorisombat, and for watching this particular show, I want to appreciate your feedback it was overwhelming. Remember to stay woke throughout. We're still having our fingers crossed. We, keep, we continue to keep tabs with that AUC race. But one thing that stood out today was the quote um, or proverb from um, uh, Honorable Malim and made everyone, you know, lighten up. I hope it does for you as well. That um, cal camel stolen by the owner can never be recovered. Have a good day. <laughs>